Who the fuck am I? Goddamn mess. My name is Tequila Mockingbird. My name is Roxy Reckless. I am Rowdy Rory. My name is Lilith Gray. My name is Milo Cox. I am Tasseled Squirrel. My name is Benjamin Dover. I'm Draconis. I'm May May Graves, and um, I am human trash. And I have been a burlesque performer and producer for about 10 years. And I host a weekly queerlesque show here in Denton, uh, and then occasionally host other shows kind of all over. I am a androgynous, gender fucked, belly dancing fireball. And I like long walks on the beach and taking it in the ass. Burlesque is a form of self-expression. Weird, strange, sexy art. <laughs> Celebration of creativity using your body. Women are um, using to reclaim themselves. And it has its roots in the erotic striptease and also in the art of theatrical satire. And it's sort of a uh, poking fun uh, with a satire at various cultural, political, anything. To me, it's three and a half minutes where I get to take my clothes off and the audience doesn't have a say in what they're gonna see. It's a way for me to kind of be like, uh, giving the middle finger to society. It's been opening up more and more and more, and there are, you know, male burlesque dancers, and it's called like boylesque, and there's, um, you know, people like me, there's non-binary people and trans people, and you know, like the whole spectrum. Queerlesque is where we take traditionally queer cultural performance art styles like drag queens, drag kings, things like that. Drag is, like, generally, drag is playing with gender and burlesque is playing with sexuality. Stripping down and not giving everything, but just enough to make you wonder. You can't tell me I can't pull my titties out in front of 250 people. <laughs> and I don't have to wear pants, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. When I first saw burlesque, I thought to myself, why aren't I doing this? <laughs> I started doing drag in a punk band in Longview, Texas about seven years ago. Wised up when I was 16 and figured out that this was a thing that you could like take classes and learn how to do and not just admire from afar. I saw a flyer for I think the Viva Fairy Tale show in 2011 or 12. It was a while ago. I have been in the community for like three or four, three or four years now. I think it's been four years now. Six years ago, um, working in an office building um, and one of my coworkers had gone and seen Dina Vaughn T's perform at the House of Blues out in LA. And my first thought was, I could do that. I could get naked on stage and have people adore me. That'd be great. I'm gonna try this. I took a couple different classes and ended up in Vivian Vermouth's um, intro to burlesque. My friend didn't know what he wanted to do. <laughs> and so he ended up um, Googling Dallas Burlesque to see what the burlesque scene was like here because he really liked burlesque. And uh, I ended up following him to the Dallas School of Burlesque and we ended up um, really just falling in love with it. Um, just the Dallas scene in general and it had so much to offer and I ended up not going to California. I've been there a few times now, but um, I ended up not going to California and I ended up making Dallas my home. I just MC shows. Um, I actually found my way into it I like found a show at Sue Ellen's, um, I think it was Panty Raid or Mustache Envy, uh, with Lilith was involved in that back in the day, and then like sort of started hanging out with Lilith and then kind of fell into the community from there. I yeah. sort of landed in burlesque um, after being diagnosed with a terminal illness and being very, very sick, and um, I lost everything. I lost my friends, I had to leave my job, and lost my home and my car, everything, and um, after two years of being very ill and being treated, I found out that I didn't have the disease that they said that I had. And so then I was left with a body that was broken and um, kind of a psyche that was broken. And um, I ended up in burlesque and in pinup culture as a way to reconnect with my body and kind of reclaim a sense of self after, after that experience. I was 
up here to see a friend perform burlesque, and um, my mom actually offered to pay for lessons if I wanted them. And so I took up the opportunity, even though it was not something that I would normally have done. I was like, as a theater nerd and a theater kid, I was like, you know, this is not something I'm really comfortable with, and so maybe I should give it a shot, because that, that's my goal as an actor, you know, you should be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And after I, you know, had like the first couple of lessons, I went, wow, this is like really, really fun, and I really enjoy this, and it's very empowering. I was wearing this shirt for our debut little performance, and I took the ties down and I showed my boobs, on the like just showing the class like group routine and um, Red Snapper was like you got something there and I was like what that I like got naked after six weeks and she goes yeah you know and then they had another one to actually how to do it the costuming and the charactering and all that but basically my calling was whenever a burlesque dancer I looked up to was like you should get on stage and I'm like yes ma'am I will do this thing. <laughs> my life was about conforming it was about being thin um, it was about being a lady and appearing a certain way. Um, and when I saw burlesque for the first time, um, I looked at these women who were women of all shapes, sizes, ages, and I thought to myself, I work so hard to look a certain way. Why do they get to celebrate what they look like and who they are, but not me? And um, I realized through actually pursuing burlesque that the only person that wasn't giving me permission to do that was myself. To see other people um, taking their bodies and putting them out there on their own terms and uh, opening up their sexuality in a public space.